I want to get it next time. Okay, there we go. Uh, so we are recording now. So if this is your first time taking hermeneutics, you are taking hermeneutics one. If you have taken hermeneutics before, then you are taking hermeneutics two. So make sure that when you're doing your homework assignments that you put on National School of Theology, hermeneutics two, if you're on the master's and doctoral level, if you're on the level of associates and bachelor's, then you're taking hermeneutics one. Now, if you are on the level of the uh the masters and you have not taken hermeneutics before still you need to take hermeneutics one so uh at the end of each class i will announce uh what homework is going to uh h1 and what homework is going to h2 so therefore just because you have a master's if you have not taken one you have to take one first and then on your on your doctoral level you will take your hermeneutics two Okay. okay, so we have um, 12 on here tonight, so. Um, Excuse me, Dr. Short, is this still the same book, though? Man, yes, it is. It's still the same okay. book. You we're okay. still using the same book. Interpreting a Scripture by Kevin Connor. So let me go ahead. Oh, we got to get the book for this. I don't have the book. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to, um, hold on, I'll get you the information for the book in just okay. a second here. Uh, let me. Um, hermeneutics. Okay, let me. Okay, oh, there's a lot of stuff I need to get rid of. I don't need you here. I need to move you out the way. Okay, I need. Oh. Okay, can we see where it says Hermeneutics Week One, two thousand and four? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so everybody can see that. So you see the name of the book. So if you don't have the book, there's the name of the book that's there. Okay. Kevin, K-E-V-I-N or K-I-V-E-N? K-I-V-E-N. Master Leads. K-E-V-I-N. Oh, Master Leads. K-E-V? Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, I do apologize. It's K-E. I do apologize. Okay. This is called the master's level. Oh no, that's saying week one. The, no, yeah, it's a master one. levels book. Yes. Interpreting the scripture by Kevin, Kevin, Connor. It's Ke yeah, Kevin K Connor, K E V E N. That's that's a typo there. Uh, oh. Correct it later on. Yes, K K E V E N. Kevin Connor. Okay. 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 Um, Doctor Short, I'm sorry. Question. Mm -hmm. Okay, are we gonna have a different book from the previous book? Or are you just putting master level? No, it's got, it's the same book we used before. Okay, all right, thank you. We're, yeah, but your your homework will uh, be a lot different. Matter of fact, this class is gonna start off a whole lot different than the one before. Now, in front of you, um, and move this down to the bottom. Okay, I so said the course outline. Um. Now, this course outline that I'm giving you, because the first time we're doing this, may not go exactly in this order, but we will cover all this. And this is just the midway point outline. This is not the totality of the whole course. But I want, so right now what we're looking at is we're going to be studying the history of hermeneutics. The Dr. Media. Short, we can't see, see the outline. We can't yeah, see the but, outline. I can't see it. Oh. Our pictures are, our it's faces are board. covering it. Whose face? Well, one, two, three, four. Go to the top of the, the, top of the you, faces. You have to do, put, yeah, you guys have to put that. Lines. That no, way. we can't move it. It's, 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 yeah. it's a, Just say go The introduction to, page is still up there, Dr. The Short. Thing that you, oh, hold on a minute. Okay. The introductory page is still up there? Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, says so my screen is okay. Hold on, let me let me come out. Okay, so I'm out now. You don't see nothing there, right? So let's. I see let's your try face. That. Just okay, let's, faces. Try, let's, try, let's try that again. Wow, it froze like that. Okay, okay, okay. So we're back at the uh, very first ones. Yeah. Yes, we're yeah. back at the very first. Right. Okay. Red and white, red with white letters. Which is first slide. 
Yeah, but something is not right here. My mouse is disappearing. Okay, I'm clicking on slide two. Can you see it now? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. course outline. That course outline. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not going to give you a chance to write all this down, but because you're going you're going to get the recording. But I just okay. want to read it out loud. And so, uh, the, this course, and this is just half. Of, this is just up to the midterm point. Okay. So we got okay. a lot to cover in four weeks. All this we're going to cover in four weeks. The history mm -hmm. of hermeneutics, the need for hermeneutics, the literal and the social scientific approach to hermeneutics, understanding the canon, their interpreter, the goal of their interpreter, then the midterm. So already, those of you that's already had it before, you're already hearing stuff that you didn't hear before. Am I correct? Yes. Well, that's another good reason why it's good for it's not only going to be a refresher course, but it's also an, an additional course because you're going to get four to six credits for this. Um, okay. And so not no longer three. You're either getting four to six credits. I'll let you know exactly at the end of this course. I'll let you know either to put six credits for this class or either four. It determine on how much work that you're going to be piling up to do. Everything is based off of credit hours. How much time I'm I'm kind of um going along. Like I said, this is the first time, so uh I can't tell you how many credit hours until we see how many hours more than likely. Um, for instance, like tonight, um, today's class, you got one credit hour for, for the classroom. And if I give you a homework assignment, then more likely you get two to three hours every week for a homework assignment. So therefore you're getting three to four credit hours. Um, so, but we'll, we'll get into that later. That's, that's not important, but so let's go on a little bit. Let me see what we have here. Okay. So I want you to go back into your chat room. Go back into the chat room. And mm -hmm. I got these. I don't want you to answer these questions. The first question is, was and I and these are true and false. Just type it out. And I'm and I need you to answer these in less than 10 seconds. Like I need everybody to do this. Wait, this Wait a just, second. I'm gonna read it to you. Don't try to read it off the computer because it's too small. But I'm gonna read the questions to you. Go inside the chat and put true or false. Okay. The first question was Jesus born. Born in a barn or a stable? The, the answer is pretty much yes oh. or no. But yes or no. Just put it in the chat. Just put it in the answer in the chat. That's it. Okay. Go to the chat. Put the answer in. Was Jesus born uh, in a barn oh. or a stable? We only got 10 seconds for this. Oh, no. He's born in the Okay. Now, the word Trinity is found in the Bible. The answer has to be yes or no. The word Trinity is found in the Bible. Yes or no. Hmm. Okay. Mary Madeline was promiscuous. True or false? Ma Mary Madeline was promiscuous. True or false? The Bible says, love the sinner, but hate the sin. Is that in the Bible? Yes Say or no? Love the sinner, but hate the sin. Is that scripture? Is that in the Bible? Mm -mm. Now, we're coming to the next one, and I want you to find this answer why we are live now. Okay, no was mocked by the people for building an ark. Is, is that true or false? Now I need you someone go and find I need everyone to go and find that again about Noah's ark and find was he um was he mocked? Let me ask you this question. You can answer orally. Uh, how many people have heard that when Noah was building the ark that they were mocking him and teasing him? Yes. 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 Okay, now go in the Bible and find it, please.
we need to In say that out loud? Say it again. Genesis, Genesis 6, 13. Okay, read it for us. When you get it, read it, please. So if you looked it up online, more likely Google gave you Genesis 6, 13 through verse 16, right? Genesis. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood, room, room shall thou make in the ark. I don't know if that's the right one, because it's supposed uh, to be you're, a you're mark reading it. To it. If you continue on reading, okay. you should run into it. You're, you're taking a long road, but I, that's fine. Go ahead. You can keep on reading if you like. If anybody wants to turn it to cheap. What was, this, what was the scripture? Um, is that Genesis, the Genesis sixth chapter? Two. I think it's Genesis 6, 13 and 14. Okay, well, you want to read that? Uh, uh, Sister Thelma, you got Genesis 6, 13 and 14? Genesis mm -hmm. 6, 13 and 14. Let me go this way. Genesis 6, 6 I have it. Okay, go ahead, Sister Okay, says, go ahead, Sister Bennings. Sister Benning, you can go ahead and read it. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Genesis 6, starting at 13. So God yes. said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is full with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. Number 14. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it, and coat it with pitch inside and out this is how you are to build it but it doesn't state that where they mocked him right, but okay but that's where when you put it in your google that's where google sent most of you am i correct right yes. but it's not there yeah that's what I i'm found. asking you to find where it's at so right. okay. okay, so that's what we're looking for. We're looking for because we were told in the movies, we've been told on sermons that that uh he was mocked. And I'm not saying it's not there, but I'm it's not as easy to find as you think. Yeah, we'll see it. I'm reading um something from Answers in Genesis, and it says, um, I'm reading this verbatim. Actually, God's word doesn't say anything about people mocking Noah and his family. You may be reaching for your Bible right now. Um, According to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, invite the class to listen closely. Uh, cut that down, please. Is that? Uh, yeah, okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. That's okay. Go ahead, Sister, uh, sister Lee. Um, it says that the idea of people might know it is one of those details most of us have heard many times, and we simply might have assumed the scripture states it outright. Um, it says, but given what we know about sinful man and the weakness, wickedness, of the pre-flood world, Genesis 6, 5. Um, and it just goes on, but it says that it doesn't not say that. it. It doesn't say it at all. But I'm no, glad... It doesn't so, say it. No, it does not say it at all. This is why we're in the Hermitage. But I also want to... Um, Sister Betty, I think... Pastor Betty, I think you were getting ready to play something. Or Can you read what you were just listening to? Yes, sir. Um, it actually was saying that this is something that um, the Church of Jesus Christ was saying, but it actually pulled up Genesis 6, 13, but it's not in the scripture. It said, invite the class to listen closely and consider ways Noah demonstrated faith in the Lord as he prepared the ark. As yet, there was no evidence of rain and flood. His people mocked and called him a fool. His preaching, his preaching fell on deaf ears. But it's no scripture to back that up. So that's now. If nothing else, we could. If nothing else, that's worth this money to, today to find that all these years we've been hearing how he was mocked through the movies and 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 how many sermons have people preached saying this? Come to find out, it's not nowhere in the scripture where he was mocked at all. Mm -hmm. I've been hearing since I was a child. Oh, yeah. That's, 
I was a child, I remember hearing about how they laughed at him while he was building it's going to rain. And they're like, oh, it's never rained before. You know what? And that's mm -hmm. why, because it, it had never, supposed to have never rained before. Got me saying, suppose now I'm, I'm being careful with everything. <laughs> so, but this is why we're doing this exercise. Now, the last one, um, everybody's heard about the seven daily sins in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. But, Find that, please. Find <laughs> the seven daily sins. It should be in the book of Proverbs, but you got Google. I see Sister Pastor Smith. She's doing her Google on her phone. I don't know why I pulled her up because she's not saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> the seven daily sins are not explicitly listed in the Bible. Not in the Bible. Mm -mm -mm. If anyone say that they don't need hermeneutics, they don't know their Bible. <laughs> okay, this is why some of you are taking it once, twice, and this is why I'm saying that you always will want to keep your hermeneutics book because there's so much teaching that is wrong so much teaching that we've heard down through the year and i want to say this explicitly that we have listened to mostly preachers and not teachers most mm -hmm. of your ministers are hoopers and hollowers and preachers but they're not teachers and so this is where we find god bless you this is where we uh, find again a lot of our errors Heck, some because most of what we've done is listen and we have not verified anything. We have taken people's word and we're about to get to the point from now on. Yes, I enjoy your uh, your preaching, but I must verify everything. <laughs> Especially when you're hearing something new, uh, you can mute your phone while you're doing that stuff. Um, uh, so, sure. Yes. The, uh, this is what my research says on that. It says the concept of the seven deadly sins is not explicitly listed in the Bible, but rather originated from early Christian teachings and writings. The seven deadly sins, also known as the capital vice of cardinal sins, are considered particularly harmful and destructive to one's spiritual well-being. The traditional list of the seven deadly sins include pride, excessive belief in one's own abilities leading to arrogance mm -hmm. and lack mm -hmm. of humility, mm -hmm. envy, jealousy, and resentment towards others for their possessions, uh, status, or qualities. Number three, lust, excessive or uh, unrestrained sexual desire. Number four, gluttony, overindulgence, and Overconsumption of food, drink, or other substance. Number five, wrath, intense anger, rage, or desire for revenge. Greed, ex number six, greed, excessive desire for wealth, possession, or material goods. Number seven, sloth, laziness, indifference, or a lack of motivation to work or fulfill responsibility. While the specific list of uh, of the seven deadly sins is not found in a single passage of the Bible. Various mm -hmm. scriptures do address behaviors and attitudes that align with these sins. For example, Proverbs. Six. That's okay. You, you you don't have to read it all. That's okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. So I have I have a scripture. I believe this is where she was lead uh, leading off Proverbs six. Right. 16, right. You're going to Proverbs. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. We're going to read it. Yeah. Um, uh, hotly eyes, lion tongue, and mm -hmm. um, hands that shed innocent blood, innocent heart blood. Devi uh, devise okay. wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into Split. evil, a false mm -hmm. witness who pours out lies, and mm -hmm. a man who stirs up uh, among dissensions brothers. among brothers. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. So again, we, we just wanted. To, I'm just trying to prove the point. I, I'm not trying to teach that, but I'm just trying to prove the point that we must read the Bible very and carefully it. and clearly and be precise, uh, being a little better at being precise when we quote, making sure 
that we're not allowing um, traditions uh, and various things to get in. Now, common Dr. misconceptions. Short. Yes. Uh huh. Um, I know I was once watching a guy uh, was speaking to a lady where she was trying to defend the faith. And he was from one of those, uh, the black, uh, the black Jews, they call themselves. But he was telling her, show me where Jesus loved all people in the Bible. And it's not in there, but what it is in there for God so loved the world. So a lot of us say, uh, we say that, but it's actually not listening in the Bible that way. But we know he loves all people. But you're not going to find that saying actually in the Bible. So that's right. one of those examples you were talking about. Right. And so sometimes well, people will... Well, there are certain ways that we say things. And today, because we have so many various types of Bibles now, uh, I think we might not find that it says it exactly like that, even with the seven daily sins. But those seven daily sins are mentioned in various different places. Uh, and so when we look at the Bible collectively, it does mention several different things. As a matter of fact, if you look at the Bible totality, it mentions more than seven, really. But Amen. Seven has made the movie famous. Um, there was a movie that was called that. I can't think of the like brother's name that uh, that are played in that movie. Um, but um, so, but yes, you're true. So let's look here at seven common. Uh, seven, Lord, how many got me saying seven? <laughs> look at the common misconceptions about biblical interpretation. Okay, number one, three. Understanding fallacies. Now, what is pre uh, pre understanding fallacies? This is preconceived understanding. People believe that they already know what God says. The average sinner feel like some of them feel like they already know uh, a number of things in the Bible because they'll tell you, "Just not you're not to be judged." They'll, they'll throw it at you real fast. You're not supposed to be judging me, and without even knowing what the word judge or judgment means, but people have a pre conceived notion and and this is some of the fallacies or falseness is our pre-understanding pre-understanding but Be, uh believe you can interpret without con excuse me believing you can interpret with complete objectivity ignoring the influences of your pre-understanding your pre-understanding before you get an understanding that's a pre uh, understanding. Uh, there's a word too called presupposition. Does anyone know what a presupposition is? Too. So you write that down because uh, it's a word that we're going to be using a lot in theology. Uh, it's called presupposition. You can Google it now if you want to. Someone can bring up the proper spelling, but it's called presupposition. Let's take. Let me take time out to, so you guys can do that. We're living in this AI world, so we might as well start using it. What is a presupposition? Is it presumption, um, Dr. Short? It's pre yeah, that's a presumption, but I want a little more than that. No, no, no. I'm asking, is that the word that you're trying to say? No, it's called presupposition. Already, uh, already assuming something, already assuming something to be before it's act, before you actually uh, know it to be the truth with your own understanding. Yes, more likely if you're doing a presupposition, more like you're doing it in a writing, and you're and you're discussing your beliefs before you actually done a deep dive study. So, so that's pretty much what it is: a presupposition. And sometimes in, in colleges, they'll ask you to write up your presupposition on, let's say, homosexuality or presupposition on any topic. That means you're going to write about it but based off of what you know right now without doing a deep uh, dive or study. Presupposition. Okay. So now when people have, uh, have their preconceived ideals, they usually are not, are usually... Uh, their ideas are coming from their upbringing, their culture, even their personality influences interpretation. These three things influence your interpretation before you do a deep dive. That's your upbringing, your culture, your own personality influences your interpretation. 
Okay, it says incidental fallacies. Not every detail in the Bible is meant to convey, convey a moral or a theological principle. <laughs> Distinguish between prescriptive and descriptive. Uh, so the answer is kind of right there, but does anybody want to still take a uh, feel like they can add a little more to prescriptive? Again, I have no problem with you doing your Google thing because I, I want to confirm. Oh, that pre means before. Yeah. Right. Prescriptive and descriptive. I remember those words from another class. Yes, yeah. we've had it before. We've had it before. Prescriptive and descriptive. Before and uh, during, ain't it? No, I think you guys are gonna have to look this one up. Yeah, uh, it's I believe uh, this is Sister Benning. It says a belief that takes precedence over another, and therefore serves as a criterion for another, an ultimate pre. pre, pre can you pronounce that for me, please? Prescriptive. <laughs> you mean prescriptive? Pre is a belief over which no other takes precedence. Okay. So so let me break even what she just read down. I got it. What does that culture does, that upbringing does that? That there are certain beliefs that um, your culture bringing, your culture, how you're brought up and your, your culture beliefs that for many people, there's nothing that supersedes what mom and dad said. If mom and dad said it, or my pastor said it, uh, there are certain things that they just believe that no matter what else you said, this thing supersedes all of that. So mm -hmm. when something is uh, prescriptive, more likely you see the word applicable there. You see the word applicable. So this is uh, now, but what we're showing here, not every scripture is applicable. Not every scripture is meant to have a, a major revelation. Okay, so therefore, everything you read in the Bible is not meant to give you illumination and revelation and inspiration. Some things are just given for historical fact. That's mm -hmm. it. Okay, so this is, well, how does that help me? Well, there are times, if, if I read to you in the Bible, there were six men that walked to Jerusalem and, um, and they fell by the wayside. Somebody's going to say, wow, six is the number of, you know, completion mm -hmm. of something. They're going to they're gonna make something out of that. And this is how we become erroneous because we, we get in trouble with numbers. We're always trying to make, take, every time we see a number in the Bible, we're always trying to make it uh, uh, prescriptive instead of just understanding that it's meant to be descriptive, just describing six people. It's not meant to be something super special. Uh, special. God is just saying it was six people that was walking through the city. That's it. Let, and mm -hmm. not try to make something, you know, supernatural out of six people. Get five more people and y'all walk to the church and God's going to bless you. Know, no, it's not. <laughs> everything is not meant to be supernatural and empowering and all of that. Some things God okay, for another thing that we do um, yes, 12 is mentioned multiple times in the Bible. Every time we see 12 does not mean that there's something applicable about that number 12 in that scripture. Right. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of times we see one or three. It's not always something mystical or magical or, or you know, that that's, and so the, because of that Okay, hold on a minute. Uh, that's why a lot of people make error because they over um, over interpret the scripture, and so we will definitely get into that obscurity fallacy. What do I mean by obscurity? What is an obscurity? Or that rare? I think that's at obscure. Something that's rare. Okay. So what is a, a, a obscure uh, fallacy? Mm. Obscurity. Obscurity, Dr. Short, I have is a state of being unknown. Oh, no. Yeah. Or have... not really understood or perceived and can refer to a lack of clarity, transparency, or visibility in various contexts. Okay. 
So let's talk about that for a second. There are multiple scriptures in the Bible that have caused so many debates. One, does God allow a woman to preach? So hmm. because it, uh, Paul does not really come out real super clear about that, there's been debates and arguments. Are women supposed to preach? Because it's one scripture says about the woman being solid, man being made first. So there are certain scriptures that are not super clear and people have chose various opinions, chose various sides. And many times, um, it's okay to say, I don't know. It's okay to say, I don't understand. It's okay to say, look, I don't have a revelation of that. Or let me appeal to someone that may uh, know more than I do. There are certain, there are various things that uh, revelation and enlightenment comes as we grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So there are things that you don't understand today that will become, you'll become illuminated. So obscurity is in darkness. You don't understand it. You don't see it. But illumination, without the word I use all the time, because we're not, and I want to repeat this for our young, our new students, that you do not ask God for revelation. You're asking God for illumination. The, the fact that the Bible is already in its revelation state. In other other words, God has already revealed Himself, but what we want is illumination, the revelation. So, uh, so obscurity is something that's dark, not understood, and and people are taking what they don't understand and speaking on things they don't understand, and this is where we can fall into a lot of trouble. Stay away from what we don't understand. Oh, Preston, comment or statement? Well, it's full for thought. Okay. Um, let me see here. Okay. Seven common states to avoid and, and interpret a scripture. And we're just doing some light things. Um, like ignoring his historical content. That's something we're going to talk about in this class. Literal interpretation. Um, using a literal interpretation of metaphoric language, we're going to discuss that. What is literal language? What is metaphoric? Uh, and switching to both. Sometimes people call it what's meant to be metaphoric, literal, call it what's meant to be literal, metaphoric. We're going to get into that. Uh, isolating verses from their content. Sometimes people try to prove a point by quoting a scripture, but they're taking it out of its context. We do, so therefore, we need to make sure that We'll read scriptures before, scriptures after, and making sure we're getting the full light of what God is, is conveying and still just taking one scripture. So what the Bible says this and this is that. But we can be really misleading by doing that, by just quoting one scripture at, at times. Applying modern cultural norms to, again, we'll, and this is a danger. When we're interpreting God's word, we cannot interpret the word um the word uh something that took place in his our history uh and compare it to our culture today for instance the greek culture is totally different the uh when the let's look at the word when the bible said god uh jacob i love esau i hate it and i use that all the time uh the the word hate in Greek does not mean the same thing as it does in English. Now, if we say in English, I hate you, that means I can't stand you. But in mm -hmm. Greek, it means I like less. It has nothing to do with not like the same. It just means you like something less. The word nice at one time does not mean what it means today. And we say something nice, we're very pleasant. But at one time, the word nice meant someone was stupid or something of this nature. Very, it, it was very, it was a very negative word. Do, do your historical research on the word nice, and you'll find out the word nice was not nice at one time hmm. and, and certain cultures. Overlooking the genre of the book, we know that we have prophetic books, we have books of poetry, we have books of history. So understanding why those books are put in those categories will help us when it comes down to understanding revelation and interpretation. Okay, so this is just an introductory of why we need hermeneutics so we can get a proper Again, interpretation. Now, just basic. I'm saying this. We're not going to go to into the book tonight. I'm just talking to you. This is a basic introductory. But um, I, I just want to give the definition so you'll know 
the definition of what the course you're taking. This is a course of hermeneutics. Hermeneutics is the art and science of interpreting scripture. Now, um, what we I want you to say this, what I just said to you though, was was wrong. Okay. I, I want to repeat myself. When I said that hermeneutics is the art and science of interpreting the scripture, and I know the book may say that, but let me break something down to you. Hermeneutics is the art and, and science. Uh, what we have is that hermeneutics is also applied in other writings other than biblical theology. So mm -hmm. I need, especially you master and doctorate students, because you may go again, to please. hermeneutics. The word hermeneutics is used also outside of theology. So hermeneutics is the art and science of studying, not just theology. So, but biblical study, there, there's biblical, there, so we're talking about biblical hermeneutics is the art and science of interpreting God's word. So we need to use the word biblical hermeneutics because hermeneutics does not just apply to the Bible. It applied to poetry and other uh, various genres of writing. Now, okay, so this is our first class. Everybody don't have your book, but I'm thinking everybody should have their book. If you ordered it, you should have it by the weekend. I need you to read. Those of you in Hermeneutics 1, I need you to read all the way from chapter one to chapter three. Those of you that's in hermeneutics two, all you're reading is chapter four. And work. So when we come back to class next week, we're going to go from chapter one to chapter five. But chapter four, my master and doctor students, I really need you next week. Uh, to, to do a deep dive into that, get a good understanding. What's the difference between Jewish hermeneutics and Christian hermeneutics? Why isn't it just plain hermeneutics? But history is going to teach, teach us that there are, uh, again, uh, a serious history of hermeneutics that we need to know that we skipped and did not do when we did hermeneutics one. Now, those of you doing Hermeneutics 1, I'm repeating myself. Do not read Chapter 4. It will may mess you up right now. Do not indulge in that. Just read 1 through 3. And then when we get done that, we're, you're going to skip that uh, group 1, and you're going to go to 4, 5, and 6 later on. But right now, I need you to do just Chapter 1, Chapter 2, and Chapter 3. That's it. Do not go into 4. You're going to come back with a 1,000 questions that uh, even if I gave the answer, you still might not understand. You got to go through the rest of this first. Sure. Yes. Uh -huh. What's the difference between the Jewish hermeneutics and what? Uh, Jewish hermeneutics and Christian hermeneutics. Okay, thank you. So that. That'll be on. That'll be actually on the page uh, seventeen. I think they bring that out a little bit. Um, uh, they talk about it somewhat. Um, but um. Uh, but I need you to go through. So you just had that one chapter. That's okay. it. Just just that one chapter with a good, clear understanding. So I shouldn't be able to ask a, a question that one of my master or doctoral students can't answer because it's more of you guys than me. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so you're getting that light on this one. So you have homework assignment, as I always do, when you get out a little bit early. Go ahead and start your assignment now. Start reading. Don't, it's not 8 o'clock yet, so take your time. Go ahead and start looking at what you're reading. Get a good start on it. Now, you're, I am not asking you to send uh, any, um, any homework assignment in. You will have homework assignment from this point out, but not tonight. Tonight is just your reading. I need you to get a good, clear understanding because we come back next Wednesday. Um, I'm going to be I'm going to be flowing. I'm going to be flowing through this. I'm going to need you to have read chapter one so I don't have to read every little thing. I'm going to flow through chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five, and probably chapter six. That's my intention next week. So if you guys do what you're supposed to do, I should have no problem getting to chapter six. But if you have a question, comment, or statement, 
Email me your question, your comment, or your statement. Email me your question, comment, or statement upon the chapter that you're, you're supposed to be writing, okay? Because I'm quite sure you will have some questions. I have no problem with that. Email me those questions. All right, we're very clear tonight. Everybody's yeah. good. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> okay, amen. So, okay, amen. So, did, did you give okay. the did you give the definition of prescripted and descriptive? Yes, I, yes. Uh, it's listen to the the video will be on my YouTube page. You can hear it. Uh, uh play it again. And it should be there. Doctor Short. Yes. Uh huh. Can you clarify to him because you do you did previously have. An email that we would email to. Now you have us going to the National School of Theology so they know the correct email to send it to. Uh, you're going, okay. You want to email your homework to doc, uh, D R O E short at gmail.com. D R O E short at gmail.com. And we, we're going to get our email straightened out for you pretty soon. We'll get that straightened out for you. Amen. <laughs> okay, um, so is there any last questions? Anyone else have anybody? Everybody's good. So again, anything that we've talked about is gonna be on the video. Give me an R. Now, for those of you that are brand new here, I do have a YouTube page that is Dr. O. E. Shore or Dr. Orlando Shore on YouTube. And if you don't see three uh three hundred or so videos, you're on the wrong one. Because I did start one years ago, I think just as Orlando Shore, and I uh something something didn't go right, and I just start all over again. But it should say Dr. Orlando Shore, you should should see three hundred or more videos there and this video should be on the top right now it should be the very first one you get to so it shouldn't be hard to find and now we'll call this will be titled hermeneutics two even though one and two i'm sorry it will be titled hermeneutics one and two you'll be able to find that and if you can't find it hit me up with a text or an email that you can't find and i will send the link to it okay all right, Saints, thank you for your time. God bless you and look forward to seeing you on next Wednesday. Most of you, I'll see you on next Monday night at 7 o'clock. Okay, Amen. Everybody Amen. be safe. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.